Hello to the mighty Southland. Welcome to this week's division manager message. My name is Jay Brad Britton. I'm your division manager and I'm giving you this message. Let's start off by talking about the top new business teams for the week. Uh, the number five spot was Covina, Jessica Herrera. Congratulations. Number four, Pomona, Day Mendoza. Nice work, Pomona team. At the number three spot, we have the Newport Beach squad and Anthony Hayes leading the way. At the number two spot, Long Beach, Strong Beach, Hans Hilton. And number one, ladies and gentlemen, Huntington Beach, Calista Cervantes with an S. Congratulations. Let's talk about our top career salespeople. These are people that are over $150,000 in sales. John Bruckner, Benjamin Cooper, Chase Bergendahl, Calista Cervantes, Connor Kelly, Leah Eliopoulos, Michael Lamaster, and leading the way, Ms. Francine Hilton. Congratulations to all of our top career salespeople. And for our reps that are under $150,000 in career sales, we were led by... Lucas Kaufman from Pomona with uh, 660 on the board. You can see he's a senior advisor there at the 30% level. We've got Sid Halsey from Huntington Beach, three orders on the board, also at 30%. We've got Cyrus Lamb from Covina, 15% there, a sale, new sales rep on the team. Will Harris from Huntington Beach, also an advanced sales rep, 869 on the board. We've got Newport Beach, Marco Estrella, knocking out four orders. I like it. Anytime I see more than four orders, I get a warm fuzzy in my heart. Thank you, Marco. Uh, FSM, 50% commission, by the way. Uh, Tyler Pomona with four orders on the board. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, 1172 at 15%. Eileen Green, the set selling queen, senior failed sales leader at 40%, knocking out two orders and two grand. By the way, I, I know $2,000 is not you know 17,000 like Francine, but think about this. Someone who's super part-time, she's a full-time mom, full-time in engineering and two orders on the week. Uh, it could be a weekend worth of work, 40%, $800 income for two extra orders. Uh, not a bad gig. And coming in at number two, Caroline Patterson, 11 orders on the board. I'm very encouraged. Caroline worked her very first Cutco event, uh, meaning where she had a booth set up at a, uh, a home show or a farmer's market, something along those lines, had 10 orders her very first day. So congrats if you're, uh, congrats, Caroline. And if you're one of those people that's just now starting to move into the events part of the business, uh, be encouraged because there's some pretty good things that can happen right there. And leading the way, Hunter Hey, what, this is some new guy, some new guy, five orders on the board. Excellent job. New advanced sales rep on the team at 20%, uh, 2409 should be moving up to the 25% level very, very soon. Last week, we had 159 orders on the board and our average order was a pretty massive 655, uh, which is really too high. And that makes me think that we might be missing out on some smaller orders uh, by uh, not dropping down all the way or dropping down properly. But this week, 185 orders, increasing our number, average order 444, right smack in the middle of actually still a very solid average order size. Anything over 300, 350 is, is uh, making us feel pretty good. Uh, time to learn is coming up. Our CPR workshops are still happening. We will not be having one this Thursday because it is Thanksgiving. Uh, you can feel free to uh, give thanks and eat or whatever it is that you choose to do on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but we will continue our CPR workshop, CPR standing for Closing Phone and Recommendations workshop Sunday at five o'clock. Uh, we're going to continue on this series of phone psychology, basically how to get people on the phone, how, uh, how to make sure you schedule a very high percentage of the people you talk to the very first time you talk to them. And very specifically right now, answering objections concerning the holidays. Uh, there's a lot of people that are saying that they're more busy than usual at this time of the year. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but people always feel more busy. It still does not mean that uh, you want to call them in January, right? We still want to get them scheduled, and we're going to be talking about exactly how to make that happen. Our very own Marianne Cristalis facilitating that workshop. So Sunday, 5 p.m., be sure to be at that. Hey, I want to talk about gratitude. Uh, here we are, Thanksgiving week, and it's a week that a lot of people start thinking about gratitude. Many of you know that my I have four life philosophies, gratitude being one of them, uh, connection, execution, simplicity, and gratitude. And uh, I love to talk about gratitude. I've got about a 20 minute or so you know, message kind of that I could give impromptu uh, about gratitude. But I just want to give you the three key points. First of all, on gratitude, uh, I want to talk about the pursuit of gratitude. Gratitude is not something that will happen naturally most of the time. Uh, un unless someone has like something really terrible happen to them and they, they come through it somehow. But 
we don't want to have to wait for something like that to happen to to have gratitude. So it needs to be something that is pursued. Many people have a gratitude journal where they, on a daily basis, write down things that they're grateful for. But one way or another, I, I want you to, to, to know and understand that gratitude only will genuinely happen in normal circumstances is if we make a conscious effort to pursue it. Uh, also, the paradox of gratitude. Now, the paradox of gratitude is like this. The people that are the most grateful are almost always the people either that have the least or that have lost the most, uh, which doesn't seem to make any sense because we find that the people who have the most are often less grateful. Uh, you probably, you may have experienced this, or if you've been to a third world country uh, where people have very, very little, they get the smallest little things and their gratitude is overwhelming. And thus, they're, they're, they have a richer life in a lot of ways because their gratitude is pure and is abundant. See, the reason that the paradox of gratitude happens the way it does is because the opposite of gratitude is not ingratitude. The opposite of gratitude is entitlement, right? And I believe in our culture, we have a very big challenge with entitlement. You see, I, I believe that where gratitude exists, uh, entitlement cannot. And where entitlement exists, gratitude cannot. Those two things cannot exist in the same point in the universe. And so Whenever I start to feel myself or hear someone else say, well, that's not fair, automatically my mind goes toward, uh-oh, I'm feeling, I must be feeling entitled if I'm th thinking that something wasn't fair. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but we feel entitled to a lot of things. Like we feel entitled that our cell phone should work, right? We drop a call. Oh my gosh, cell phone service sucks, right? I don't believe we have a right to, to be, uh, to, to feel that way to feel entitled to good cell phone service, unless every single time I made a call and I didn't drop, I showed genuine gratitude and sincere gratitude for every time my call didn't drop, right? Does that make sense? If I'm at the grocery store and I don't get the right change, right? I, I shouldn't get upset. I can say, hey, you know, the cha you know, change is incorrect, but I don't want to get upset about it because I don't have a right to, unless every single time I got the correct change, I had genuine and sincere gratitude for getting the correct change. If I go to a restaurant, let's say I drive through a fast food restaurant or something and, and they don't get my order correct, right? What do we do? We get upset. Oh my gosh, can't believe they get my order wrong. I don't know. I don't think I have a right to, to really be upset about that unless I had genuine and sincere gratitude every single time that they got it right. You see, we feel entitled to things and therefore when it doesn't happen the way we think it should, oftentimes we kind of blow up or get really frustrated or what have you. Uh, I just don't I just don't believe that that is the right way to go through life. I believe we need to feel grateful in all things, no matter what, even if it could seem like it's something that's terrible happening. How many times have you heard someone say, this thing that I thought was really a negative thing in my life turned out to be one of the best things ever in my life? Uh, this is extremely common. So I think we need to be feel grateful in all things and always look for the gift in everything. Even if it seems like in the short term, it's not a gift, right? But we have to look for it because there's a gift in there somewhere and we're going to just live a richer and more fulfilling life if we do that. So get rid of entitlement, make room for gratitude. Southland core values right here, honesty without compromise, integrity above reproach, constant and ever improvement, be positive and inspiring, have fun and make sure we have that whatever it takes mentality. Wanted to uh, remind you of a couple of mantras, things that we say in Southland, demos reign supreme. I heard this put kind of in an interesting way. It's something along the lines of volume negates luck or volume supersedes luck, right? Sometimes we see somebody go out and do one or two appointments and make two sales and they sell a couple thousand bucks, whatever. Hey, fantastic. That's great. But I tell you what, volume, numbers of demos is what really matters. It's what really matters when it comes to volume of income, but what mostly it matters in ability to gain skill, right? Ability to gain skill doesn't happen on one or two or three demos in a week. Uh, two or three demos in a day, four or five days in a row, you do that, it, you, you can't help but improve quickly, right? Whereas you don't really get much better just doing one or two or three demos here a week. You're going to get the same type of averages. So demos reign supreme, finding ways to do more, finding times to do more, increasing the skill and how to schedule them. Thus, the workshop that we're having coming up on Sunday uh, all really matter. And of course, if you're going to do demos, phone time is the fuel. Make sure you're joining the phone jams Thursdays, Sundays, and Tuesday evenings, not this Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. Uh, and also on Saturday mornings, talk to your manager. Your manager should be reminding you every day that they talk to you when the next phone jam is, right? And if you can't make the, the group corporate phone jam, then make your own phone jam, set up a 
a phone jam with you and one other person on your team, jump on a Zoom or meet at a coffee shop, whatever. But phone time is the fuel to this business. Always remember that. And as long as people are making phone calls, they're going to love this job. They're going to love this business. They're going to be making money. Uh, make sure that you fuel your business the right way. Hey, don't just think about it. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. See ya.